In this demonstration, we're going to install System Reporter 3.1 MU1 on Windows Server 2012. Some things to, uh, to think about before your individual installation. Uh, this is just a demo. If you're doing this in production, then there are some best practices to follow for System Reporter. One of those best practices is to have your database separate from your System Reporter installation. Now, with that said, uh, you can install System Reporter on a Red Hat box or uh, Windows Server. The uh, databases that are supported are SQLite, which it comes with, which I highly recommend you never use unless it's uh, a POC or a lab environment that you're going to be testing out the database. It supports Oracle, at which point you will need to install the Oracle client. It does support uh, my uh, Windows SQL Server, uh, which I also don't recommend unless you have a SQL Server uh, DBA available. It it is a little buggy, and then of course it does install or it does support uh, MySQL. Now the versions for MySQL that it supports are 5.1 and 5.5. The current release is 5.6, so you have to make sure you go down to 5.5 in order to get that installed and supported. You'll also need to install Apache uh, 2.2, and we'll go through that in a second. So uh, so the best practices again would be to <clears throat> not install System Reporter on your 3PAR array. So why is that? Well, your the goal of System Reporter is historical monitoring and analysis. So it makes sense to install that on something that is not on the array. If the array, for any reason, goes under a, a huge workload and you have difficulty accessing the array, then you're going to want to look at your System Reporter and see what's been going on over the last you know, uh, hours, weeks, etc. So what I typically do is install it on a VM that's maybe on a drive that a host physically has it installed on. Um, just you know, try to put it outside of the three par array so it just pulls the array, gets the information, if the array has any uh, blips or whatever uh, in performance, then you can go into this tool and kind of look at uh, what's been going on without uh, seeing any impact or, or not being able to access the tools, what I'm trying to say. All right. So um, we're going to go through the uh, installation, but I wanted to point out a couple of things. So I've downloaded the ISO, I've mounted it to my DVD-ROM. Under Documents, there are two files. This first one here I'm going to talk about. I don't have Excel installed on this, on this lab machine, but um, this file could not be any less important ever. Uh, what this file does is it's a system reporter sizing XLS. Before you do your system reporter installation, contact HP, get a hold of your partner, talk to somebody about getting this system reporter sizing filled out. You can attempt to fill it out yourself. You might be able to do it. But what this does is it gives you uh, a good understanding of what's uh, technically required in your system reporter how much CPU you need, how much memory you need in order to support your specific environment. Too many times we, you know, have done installations where there's a uh, a client is running adaptive optimization, you know, tiering, right? And the installation was not sized appropriately for their install. They just did a blanket install, you know, two CPUs, two gigs of memory. They're running both System Reporter and My and MySQL in the same box, and that's not an optimal environment uh, to run System Reporter for that particular purpose. Uh, it gets overloaded. Memory can get filled up. I mean, it's doing a lot of work. So make sure you go through the sizing exercise so that your individual System Reporter installation. Can, can support your environment. All right. Also under System Reporter here, or in the System Reporter file, so you want to get Acrobat installed. You know, open this up and actually go through the checklist here. Make sure that under Installation Configuration that you have everything that you need in order to get it started. You'll notice here that we have to install the command line interface. All right, which is a CD that comes with your 3PAR. Um, so that has to be installed. Apache Server has to be installed. Uh, like I said, you need the Oracle client if you're using Oracle. Uh, it's a best practice to not use DHCP. If we go down here, we can look at here's SQLite. This is provided. Don't use it. Uh, MySQL databases, server 2000, or sorry, server uh, 51 and 55. We're going to go with 55. <clears throat> and it does support um, SQL Server 2008 uh, R2. 
and R2 SP1. All right. So we're going to step through a little of this, and then uh, uh, I need to download the, the the files and stuff. So I'll grab those, and then we'll get started to go. We'll be right back. Okay. So we've got uh, MySQL 5532 installed, or downloaded rather. So let's go and uh, we'll get the uh, other applications installed first. So uh, if you couldn't find your CLI CD, they've actually included it now in the uh, system reporter installation. So let's go and start with that. Just taking all the defaults. Alright, I'm going to install the Apache that it comes with. Again, just accepting all the defaults. Okay, so now before we run the installer, we want to go ahead and get the database installed. So I'll go back to the downloads directory. Alright, we'll go ahead and run that. <clears throat> Typical installation, install, yes. Next, next. And here we want to launch the uh, configuration wizard. So make sure that we've got detailed configuration. All right, don't use the standard one. <clears throat> it's going to be a uh, server machine. Next, uh, multifunctional database. Next, uh, let's see installation path is fine. ETFS is fine. Decision support. So keep that one. This is 15 is fine. No strip mode. It's fine. Uh, standard character set. Yeah. Uh, installs a service. Yes. I also want to check this. Include the uh, bin directory here. Next. Uh, modify security settings. It, and then you need to enter in a, uh, a root password or an administrator password. And don't check this, create an uh, anonymous account. Uh, we're going to have to create two specific accounts uh, for logging in a web user and a CLI user. Next, and we'll get that execute. Okay, so that's finished. Now we have to do some setup to the system, or sorry, to the MySQL database. So we want to go to the C drive for Windows, uh, program files. Um, I think I did the 64 bit, there it is. MySQL, SQL Server 5.5. And then I want to look, look for the My INI file right here. And we'll edit that. Make that bigger for you. All right, and under this MySQL, yeah, under this MySQL section, MySQL D, right here, like under Port, I want to put in um, max underscore allowed underscore packet equals thirty-two meg, just like that. 
just going to put a note in here. Save that. Oh, I didn't do it as administrator. Yes, yeah, so it's going to create as a new file. All right. Let's try it again. That's my file. <clears throat> okay, so let's try this again. need to do a little CLI work. Come on, Windows. It's hard to do this remotely. Come on. There we go. Password. All right, so now I'm logged in uh, to the database. So we need to create uh, the database and the, the schema, and we need to create two users and then grant privileges to those users. So first of all, we'll create uh, database and serve stats. Now, uh, all these instructions are in that PDF uh, under system report that I showed you earlier. I'm just accepting all the defaults per the document. It just helps with troubleshooting in case anybody uh, has to jump on here and take a look at it. All right. So create user CLI user identify. And we'll do something easy like password one two three. And the CLI user um, that account would actually. Uh, it runs the sampler policy. It will also log into the uh, to the three part array and make sure you add a semicolon here to the end. Um, and then our second user is going to be a web user, and that's the user. It's hard to type and talk at the same time. Um, that's the user that yeah, runs the reports. So now we have our two users created. Now we just need to grant the policy or grant uh, their privileges. So um, we need to use the database. All right. So now we switched over to that, and then we grant all on star to. And the star is because I'm already in the database. If I wasn't, then I would change that to grant all on insert stats. 
Okay. But grant all on star to CLI user. All right, so it has all rights. And we want to grant select on star to web user. All right, now just to make sure that the rights uh, have been loaded, we're going to flush privileges. Privileges. Good. Right, we can exit that. And then we can go through our uh, three par installation. So we go back to that disk and we can run the installer. Now notice right here, here's the next button, right? No, the only words are up here, so don't hang out here too long. Notice the next, all right? I'm going to close this back window. All right. Uh, CLI, we're just going to take the defaults. Defaults, defaults. Select your database. MySQL. Here's my local host. Insert stats here is the database name. Next. And here's the two users, so we'll just need to... And the password. Next. All right. uh, if you're going to use an SMTP server and if it needs to log in, I don't have one. Uh, I could set it up later, but um, this would uh, send out emails. Click next button to begin. Okay, so now we have System Reporter and the database installed. Now we just have to find our browser. And I'm just going to go to localhost because that's where it's installed. And I need to type in 3bar. So here, here's the installation. There's no systems currently assigned to it. All right, so I just need to add a system to it. Which one was it? Policy settings, maybe? Yeah, insert systems. And here's where I would add my insert. And let me see which number that is. Give me just a second. Of the, uh, of the system, you'll put in your CLI user, CLI password. Uh, accounts and these are accounts that uh, should be able to log into the three bar. All right, so it's separate than the CLI user you're using your MySQL database. All right, and for this sample adaptive optimization, you're not going to use this if you have a V or if you have a 7000 series. This was for the older systems. They use the so same software for everything uh, with three bar. So it's either you know the same OS or uh, the same system reporter software is supported on even the T and the and the F series boxes, and that's what this is really for. If you had an older code code release, all right. So if you've got a V or seven thousand, you're using adaptive optimization um, system reporter database that's stored on the nodes, no longer here. So you won't check that. Okay, and that's it. So you should have it up and running. Uh, you'll be able to put in your system. Again, you'll put in your system. Uh, under the policy settings, insert system right here, you'll add the box and you can have um, a few of those into one uh, system reporter installation. I can't remember exactly how many now, I want to say 16, but uh, that might be just because the uh, the GUI uh, can handle 16 inserts, but you can have more than one uh, system in the same system reporter. If you're going to do that, again, I can't stress enough to make sure that you go through that sizer exercise to ensure that you have enough resources to support not only one system uh, insert but you have enough to support every one that you add in here all right so that's it for now we're just going through the uh, basic install under windows hope you found this helpful thanks